Eric's voice trembled as he spoke, his eyes darting nervously toward the window. I followed his gaze, but all I could see was the dim glow of the lamp, illuminating the gathering darkness outside. It's probably just a moth, I reassured him, though the unease in his voice lingered in the air like an ominous fog. Eric leaned forward, his hands gripping the armrests of his chair tightly. I've seen them, he whispered, his voice barely audible. They come every night, tapping against the glass, trying to get in. I frowned, puzzled by his words. Who comes every night? He hesitated, as if debating whether to confide in me or keep his fears hidden. Finally, he spoke, his voice barely above a whisper. The children, the ones from down here. His words sent a shiver down my spine, and I couldn't help but glance nervously at the cellar door. The thought of what might be lurking in the darkness below filled me with a sense of dread. What do you mean, the ones from down here? I asked trying to keep my voice steady despite the rising fear in my chest. Eric swallowed hard, his eyes darting around the room as if searching for unseen threats. They're not like us, he murmured. They're different. They come to me in my dreams, whispering secrets, urging me to join them. I watched him in silence, unsure of how to respond to his cryptic words. The storm outside seemed to grow louder, the sound of wind and rain echoing through the walls of the house like the distant wails of lost souls. We have to do something, Eric said, his voice urgent. We can't let them take me. I nodded, though I wasn't sure what I could do to help him. The situation felt surreal, like something out of a horror movie. But Eric's fear was real, palpable, and I couldn't ignore it. We'll figure this out, I promised, though the words felt hollow even to my own ears. But first, we need to get you some help. You can't fight this alone. Eric nodded, his expression grateful, but still tinged with fear. As we sat in the dimly lit room, the storm raging outside. I couldn't shake the feeling that we were on the brink of something far more sinister than either of us could imagine. And as the tapping against the window continued, I couldn't help but wonder what other secrets lay hidden in the darkness of Eric's troubled mind. Usual that day, burning hot against my skin. But when my eyes adjusted, saw something that chilled me to the bone. Eric paused, his hands trembling as he recounted the memory. I listened intently, my heart pounding in my chest as I waited for him to continue. There, in the midst of that strange black haze, I saw them, Eric whispered, his voice barely audible over the howling wind outside the children. My blood ran cold at his words, and I felt a chill creep up my spine. Children, I repeated, my voice barely a whisper. Eric nodded, his eyes wide with fear. They were standing in the middle of the road, just staring at me with those empty eyes. But there was something off about them, something unnatural. I swallowed hard, my mind racing with fear and disbelief. What did they look like? I asked, my voice barely steady. Eric shook his head, his expression haunted. I can't describe it. They were like shadows, shifting and twisting in the haze. And their eyes, their eyes were empty, soulless. They didn't blink, didn't move just stood there, staring at me. A shiver ran down my spine as I imagined the scene Eric described. It
It sounded like something out of a nightmare. Something too terrifying to be real. What did you do? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Eric looked down at his hands, his expression troubled. I... I ran, he admitted, his voice trembling. I didn't stop until I reached home. But even then, I couldn't shake the feeling that they were still out there, watching me. I reached out and placed a comforting hand on Eric's shoulder, my own fear momentarily forgotten as I tried to reassure him. It's okay, Eric, I said, my voice gentle. We'll figure this out together. But first, we need to get you the help you need. Eric nodded, his expression grateful, but still tinged with fear. And as we sat there in the dimly lit room, the storm raging outside, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were on the brink of something far more sinister than either of us could imagine. But I was determined to help Eric, no matter what horrors lay ahead. Knew you wouldn't believe me, Eric said, his voice tinged with frustration. But I'm telling you, something isn't right. It wasn't just a one-off incident. After that night, strange things started happening. I leaned forward, my curiosity peaked despite my skepticism. What kind of strange things? I asked, trying to keep my voice calm. Eric hesitated, as if unsure whether to continue, but then he took a deep breath and plunged ahead. I started seeing them everywhere, he confessed, his voice barely above a whisper. At first, it was just glimpses out of the corner of my eye, shadows moving in the darkness fleeting and elusive, but then, then they started appearing more frequently, more boldly. My heart pounded in my chest as I listened to Eric's words. The rational part of my mind told me that he was experiencing hallucinations, but another part, a primal instinct deep within me, whispered that there might be something more sinister at play. What did you do? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Eric shook his head, his eyes haunted. I tried to ignore them, to convince myself that they weren't real. But no matter how hard I tried, they wouldn't go away. They followed me everywhere, lurking in the shadows, watching me with those empty eyes. A chill ran down my spine as I imagined the terror Eric must have felt, haunted by phantoms that only he could see. Did you tell anyone? I asked, my voice trembling. Eric nodded, his expression grim. I tried to tell my parents, but they didn't believe me. They thought I was having another episode, that I needed to increase my medication, but I knew, I knew it wasn't just in my head. I reached out and placed a comforting hand on Eric's shoulder, my heart aching for him. We'll figure this out, Eric, I promised, though the words sounded hollow even to my own ears. We'll find a way to make it stop. But deep down, I feared that there might be no easy solution to Eric's plight. The shadows that haunted him seemed to defy rational explanation lurking just beyond the reach of understanding. And as the storm raged outside, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were standing on the precipice of something far more terrifying than either of us could imagine. Train from there, the sound of the trains, the rumble of the tracks. It always felt so alive, but that day I felt like I was being watched like something was lurking in the shadows, just out of sight. I tried to shake off the feeling, focusing on my camera and trying to capture the scene in front of me. But then, then I heard it again, the same voice whispering from
from the darkness beneath the bridge. Down here, I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I knew I should leave, that I should run as fast as I could and never look back, but I couldn't bring myself to move. I felt compelled to find out what was down there, to uncover the source of that haunting voice. So, against my better judgment, I descended the stairs to the platform below, and as I reached the bottom, I saw it, or rather, I saw them. Eric's voice trembled as he spoke, his eyes distant, as if reliving the horror of that moment. I leaned forward, my heart racing with fear and anticipation. What did you see? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Eric swallowed hard, his hands trembling as he struggled to find the words. They were there, David. The children, but they weren't like any children I'd ever seen before. Their faces were twisted and distorted, their eyes empty and soulless. And as I looked at them, I felt a sense of overwhelming dread wash over me. I knew then that whatever they were, they were not of this world. A chill ran down my spine as I listened to Eric's words. The rational part of my mind told me that he was experiencing a psychotic episode, that the hallucinations were simply a manifestation of his illness, but another part, a primal instinct deep within me, whispered that there might be something more sinister at play. We have to get you out of here, Eric, I said, my voice urgent. We have to get you help before it's too late. But as I spoke, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were standing on the brink of something far more terrifying than either of us could imagine. And as the storm raged outside, I knew that the darkness closing in around us was more than just a metaphor. It was a harbinger of unspeakable horrors to come. Photo later, there was nothing there. Eric nodded solemnly, exactly. It was like it wasn't even there in the first place. But I know what I saw, David. I know it was real. I sighed, feeling a mixture of concern and frustration. Eric, I think it's best if we get you to a doctor. This isn't healthy, and I'm worried about what might happen if you don't get help. Eric looked down, his expression a mix of resignation and fear. I know you're just trying to help, David. But I can't shake the feeling that there's something more going on here. Something sinister. I reached out and placed a hand on Eric's shoulder, trying to offer what little comfort I could. Look, we'll figure this out together, okay? But right now, the most important thing is getting you the help you need. Eric nodded his eyes still held a glimmer of uncertainty. Okay, David, I trust you. As the storm raged on outside, I couldn't shake the feeling that Eric's hallucinations were just the beginning of something far more ominous. And as I looked into his haunted eyes, I knew that whatever lay ahead, we would face it together. Bridge, we'll see if it's still there. I hesitated, unsure if indulging Eric's delusions was the right course of action, but seeing the intensity in his eyes, I relented. Perhaps confronting whatever he believed he saw would help dispel his fears. All right, let's go, I said reluctantly. We grabbed our jackets and hurried out into the storm, the wind howling around us as we made our way to the bridge. The rain lashed against us, soaking us to the bone. But Eric seemed undeterred, his determination driving him forward. As we reached the bridge, Eric's pace quickened, his eyes scanning the area frantically. But as we approached the half archway, there was nothing there except darkness and the sound of rain echoing off the walls. Eric stood there for a moment, 
his expression a mixture of disappointment and relief. It's gone, he muttered, almost to himself. See, Eric? There's nothing here, I said gently, hoping to reassure him. But Eric shook his head, his gaze fixed on the empty space beneath the bridge. It was here, I know it was, he insisted. I didn't know what to say. Eric's conviction was unsettling, and I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to this than just a figment of his imagination. Let's get you home, Eric, I said finally, placing a hand on his shoulder. As we made our way back through the storm, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the air. Whatever Eric believed he saw under that bridge, it had shaken him to his core and I feared that this was only the beginning of something far more sinister. Stood ajar, a faint light spilling out from within. My heart pounded in my chest as I approached cautiously, the beam of my flashlight trembling slightly in my hand. With each step, the feeling of unease grew stronger, like a weight pressing down on me. As I reached the door, I hesitated for a moment, unsure of what I might find inside, but curiosity and concern drove me forward, and with a trembling hand, I pushed the door open further. The room beyond was dimly lit. The source of the light coming from a single flickering candle on a small table in the corner, shadows danced on the walls, casting eerie shapes seemed to move of their own accord. And there, sitting in the center of the room, was Eric. His eyes were wide and vacant, staring off into the distance as if lost in another world. His hands were clenched into fists, and his body was tense with a palpable fear. Eric, what's going on? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. He didn't respond, his gaze fixed on something unseen. I followed his line of sight and saw that he was staring at a dark corner of the room where the shadows seemed to coalesce into a formless mass. A shiver ran down my spine as I approached slowly, the sense of dread weighing heavy on me. But as I drew nearer, the shadows seemed to dissipate and I realized there was nothing there but darkness. Eric, there's nothing here, I said, trying to reassure him. But he didn't seem to hear me, his eyes still fixed on the empty space. And then, in a voice barely above a whisper, he spoke. It's here, David. It's always here, watching, waiting. I felt a chill run down my spine at his words primal fear gripping me in its icy grasp, but I pushed it aside, trying to remain calm for Eric's sake. Come on, Eric, I said, reaching out to him. Let's get you out of here. But as I touched his shoulder, he recoiled, his eyes widening with terror. No, David, you don't understand, he said, his voice trembling. It's not safe here. We need to leave. Now. I hesitated, unsure of what to do. But then, another crash of thunder echoed through the house. And I knew we had to get out before it was too late. All right, Eric, I said, my voice firm. Let's go. Together, we hurried out into the storm. The wind and rain whipping around us as we made our way to safety, and as we left Eric's house behind, I couldn't shake the feeling that we had narrowly escaped something dark and sinister, something that lingered in the shadows, waiting to strike, diverted to the sensation. I almost missed the faint sound coming from one of the doorways. It was a whisper barely audible over the howling wind outside, but unmistakably human. David, 
My blood ran cold at the sound of my name, whispered from the darkness of the cellar. Every instinct screamed at me to run, to flee from whatever unseen horror awaited me in the depths below. But despite my fear, a stubborn determination took hold of me. Eric needed my help, and I couldn't abandon him now. Clutching my phone tightly, I took a shaky step towards the doorway from which the whisper had come. Eric, is that you? I called out, my voice trembling with uncertainty. There was no response, only silence echoing back at me. The darkness seemed to press in around me, suffocating and oppressive. Summoning all the courage I could muster, I forced myself to move forward, one cautious step at a time. Each footfall echoed in the empty cellar, a hollow sound that seemed to mock my fear. As I approached the doorway, I held my breath, bracing myself for whatever I might find on the other side. With a trembling hand, I reached out and pushed the door open revealing the darkness beyond. And then, without warning, a blinding flash of lightning illuminated the cellar, casting stark shadows against the walls. In that brief moment of light, I caught a glimpse of something in the darkness, something that sent a chill down my spine. A figure, hunched and shrouded in shadow, stood at the far end of the room, its eyes gleamed with an unnatural light, fixing me with a gaze that seemed to pierce straight through to my soul. Before I could react, the darkness swallowed it once more, leaving me standing alone in the dim light of my phone. Heart pounding, I stumbled backwards, the urge to flee overwhelming. But then, from the darkness, came another whisper softer this time, but filled with an unmistakable urgency. Help me, David. With a surge of adrenaline, I knew what I had to do. Ignoring the voice of doubt in my mind, I plunged forward into the darkness, determined to find Eric and bring him back to safety, no matter the cost. A tidal wave. For a moment, I was disoriented surrounded by the chaos of the storm. But as the adrenaline surged through my veins, I knew I had to find Eric. Climbing out of the wreckage, I stumbled into the darkness. My clothes soaked through, and my body trembling from the shock of the crash. The rain beat down relentlessly, and the wind howled like a banshee. But I pushed forward, driven by the desperate need to find my friend. Through the downpour, I caught a glimpse of movement up ahead. It was Eric, still running blindly through the storm, his screams lost in the wind, ignoring the pain and the fear gnawing at my insides. I forced my legs to move faster, determined to reach him before it was too late. As I drew closer, I could see the terror etched on Eric's face, illuminated by flashes of lightning. He stumbled and fell, but he scrambled back to his feet, driven by a primal instinct to flee from whatever unseen horror pursued him. Eric, I shouted, my voice barely audible over the roar of the storm. Stop, it's me, David my words were lost in the chaos, swallowed up by the tempest raging around us. With a surge of desperation, I pushed forward, my heart pounding in my chest as I reached out to grab hold of my friend. And then, just as I was within arm's reach, a blinding flash of lightning illuminated the darkness, casting stark shadows against the stormy sky. In that brief moment of light, I saw something that froze the blood in my veins. A dark figure looming over Eric, its shape twisted.
twisted and grotesque. It seemed to shimmer and shift, as if it were made of smoke and shadow, and its eyes gleamed with a malevolent light. Before I could react, the darkness swallowed it once more, leaving me standing alone in the storm, my hands reaching out into empty air. Eric, I screamed, my voice raw with fear and desperation. But there was no response, only the howling of the wind and the relentless drumming of rain against the pavement. In that moment, I knew I was alone, trapped in a nightmare from which there was no escape. And as the storm raged on around me, I realized that I was powerless to stop whatever darkness had taken hold of my friend. Road, the trees swayed ominously in the wind, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers grasping at the darkness. Despite the pounding rain and the howling wind, pressed on, driven by a mix of fear for Eric's safety, and a desperate need to understand the madness that had consumed him. Through the storm, I caught glimpses of Eric's figure up ahead, stumbling and lurching forward as if pursued by unseen demons. With each step, the distance between us seemed to grow swallowed up by the darkness and the chaos of the night. But still, I pressed on, my heart pounding in my chest and my breath ragged in my lungs. I couldn't abandon Eric, not now, not when he needed me the most. As I emerged from the woods, I found myself on the outskirts of town, the familiar landmarks obscured by the driving rain and the impenetrable darkness. But ahead, I could see a faint glimmer of light, a beacon in the night that drew me forward with renewed determination. Pushing through the storm, I finally reached the source of the light. A small, run-down cottage nestled at the edge of the woods. The windows were dark, but smoke billowed from the chimney a sign of life amidst the desolation of the storm. With a sinking feeling in my stomach, I realized that Eric must have sought refuge in the cottage. But as I approached, a sense of unease washed over me, a primal instinct warning me of danger lurking within. Ignoring the warning, I pushed open the creaking door and stepped inside. The air was thick the scent of smoke and damp earth, and the only sound was the crackling of the fire in the hearth. And then, in the flickering firelight, I saw him, Eric, huddled in the corner of the room, his eyes wide with terror, and his body trembling with fear. Eric, I said softly, stepping forward with caution. It's me, David. You're safe now. But Eric didn't respond. His gaze fixed on something unseen in the darkness beyond. And then, with a suddenness that sent a shiver down my spine, he spoke, his voice barely a whisper in the stillness of the room. It's here, he said, his words sending a chill through my bones followed me. It's here. And as I looked into his eyes, I knew that the madness that had consumed him had not been banished by the light of the fire. It lurked in the shadows, waiting to strike again. And I knew then that our ordeal was far from over. Feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. A primal instinct warning me of danger, but despite the fear coursing through my veins, I knew I couldn't leave Eric alone in that dark and foreboding tunnel. Summoning every ounce of courage I had, I forced myself to follow Eric into the tunnel, the 
darkness enveloped me like a suffocating cloak, and the sound of the storm outside seemed to fade into a distant echo. Eric! I called out, my voice echoing off the damp walls of the tunnel. Eric, we need to get out of here. But there was no response. Only the eerie silence of the tunnel and the sound of my own rapid heartbeat echoing in my ears. I moved forward cautiously, my hands outstretched in front of me to feel my way through the darkness. The ground beneath my feet was slick with rainwater, and I struggled to maintain my balance as I navigated the uneven terrain. And then, just as I was about to call out again, I saw it, a faint glimmer of light up ahead, like a beacon in the darkness. Heart pounding, I quickened my pace, desperate to reach the source of the light and find Eric. But as I drew closer, my excitement turned to horror. For there, in the dim glow of the light, I saw Eric standing motionless, his eyes wide with terror, and his body trembling uncontrollably. And beside him, looming out of the darkness like a specter from the depths of hell, was the entity Eric had spoken of a swirling mass of shadow and smoke, its form shifting and twisting in the dim light. I froze in place, unable to move as the entity turned its gaze upon me, its eyes burning with a malevolent intensity that sent a shiver down my spine. And then, without warning, it lunged forward its dark tendrils reaching out to engulf me in its grasp. I screamed, the sound echoing off the walls of the tunnel as I stumbled backward, desperately trying to escape the creature's grasp. But it was no use. The darkness closed in around me, swallowing me whole as I was consumed by the terror of the unknown. And in that moment, as the darkness consumed me, I knew that I would never escape its grasp, led him to a tragic end, but deep down, I cannot shake the feeling that there was something more at play that night, something dark and sinister lurking in the shadows of that half archway, something that reached out and claimed Eric's life. In the days and weeks that followed, I tried to make sense of it all. I visited the site of the accident countless times, staring into the darkness of the tunnel, searching for answers that I knew I would never find. But the truth remained elusive, hidden behind a veil of uncertainty and fear. And so I am left with nothing but memories of my dear friend, memories tainted by the lingering sense of dread that still haunts me to this day. I cannot help but wonder what might have been if I had been able to save him, if I had been able to break free from the grip of that unseen force that pulled him into the darkness. But as the years pass and the memories fade, I find solace in the knowledge that Eric is finally peace, free from the torment of his illness and the darkness that consumed him. And though I may never fully understand what happened that night, I will always carry his memory with me, a reminder of the fragile nature of our existence and the thin line that separates the world of the living from the realm of the unknown. Thank you for sharing your account. It's clear that the events surrounding Eric's experiences and ultimate tragedy have left a profound impact on you. The exploration of sanity, reality, and the fragility of our perceptions is a deeply philosophical and introspective journey. Indeed, the 
the human mind is a complex and mysterious entity capable of conjuring both wonders and horrors. The line between reality and illusion can sometimes blur, leading us down paths we never imagined traversing. Your contemplation on the nature of reality and the limitations of human understanding is thought-provoking. It's understandable that you choose to distance yourself from the sight of those harrowing events, as they represent a nexus of fear and uncertainty. The fear of encountering those haunting words again is a testament to the lasting impact of trauma on the human psyche. May you find peace and solace in the knowledge that you did what you could for your friend, and that you continue to navigate the complexities of existence with courage and resilience. And may Eric's memory serve as a reminder of the importance of empathy, understanding, and the pursuit of truth, even in the face of darkness.